I want to come back to the, the, the execution stake, but I just want to say something right now about the fallen Sukkot Dabi. The fallen Sukkot Dabi is the division between the prime and Judah. It's a falling booth and it's continuing to fall and the reason it's falling is because of the first judicial matter and it's listed in the foundations in, in Hebrews chapter 6. You know what that first foundation stone is? Repentance. Repentance is a judicial act. It's not, it's been taken out of that to a religious act. And we have no idea whatsoever why repentance is a judicial matter. Now I'm going to share why it's a judicial matter. Because this is where Satan is defeated in our lives. It's one of the first steps of defeating the nature and the power of sin operating still in our members. So, but we have to go back to Yeshua's death, dying. Remember in Romans 4, I mean in, in 2 Corinthians 4, Paul speaks about that, that treasure we have in earth and vessels, the excellency of the powers are not of us, but of Him. And about the dying of Yeshua works in me, that the life of Yeshua can work through my mortal flesh and into the life of others. Okay, so this is the idea. But how do we get there? How do we get there? We get there through discerning, we get this through the, discerning and understanding what took place in, the, in Yeshua's time. Because here is where the enemy was defeated. He was totally stripped of all power and authority over humanity. On, on the, in the dying of Yeshua. Because it says in Colossians, I think it's 2, probably better look this up and pull it correctly. That is a very important scripture. If you have your Bibles. Very powerful scripture. Colossians 2. Maybe I got Colossians. Maybe Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Where he talks about verse 13. It says, I rescued you from the kingdom of darkness, transferred you to the kingdom of my beloved son. In verse 21. And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind and in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death. This is judicial. I want to emphasize the judicial aspects of this. Because spiritually is, is, is where the enemy lost his rights over humanity. Human, the Adam, Adam was put into Messiah in his flesh on that execution stake so that he could present us before him holy and blameless beyond reproach. I mean, I should hear hallelujahs. Can you imagine? This is our present condition. And how is it our present condition? It is because Yeshua in one moment on that execution stake. What did he cry out? Abba, why have you forsaken me? How could it ever be a son who's always been with the father came into this sukkah and stayed in relationship to the father until that one point, that one instant in time right over here. And he would cry out, Why have you forsaken me? You know why? Because the Father had just put the sinner man, Adam, into the flesh of his son. And the Father could no longer look or have a relationship with him. You understand this? 
you, us, on in the body of the dying Messiah, in his fleshly body. Because the Father wanted to redeem his son, Adam. He sure didn't need to be redeemed. Who's being redeemed? Who's being restored? Who's being sanctified? Who, who is it? It is my son, Adam. Paul continues to explain all of this in his writings. This is why the, Peter said it's very hard to understand Paul sometimes. And people go on distorting his teachings. As a matter of fact, one of the things that's happening in our movement right now, in the Ephraimite movement, because there's such a longing to come back to the land, such a longing to identify with Judah, such a longing to get to get here and do the things, we will compromise truth in order to do this. And the, the one that gets attacked first and foremost will be the Apostle Paul. Because he knows that most of these individuals have been in a church, in an apostate church system. And they've been lied to already, and they've already believed lies, and they've already are in walking, walking in disobedience, unbelief, and because that, he knows they're not at rest. You can't be, because the power of sin is not being overcome and defeated. The only way, and it cannot be through good works. The Father says, I've given you good works from of old. But they'll become dead works. You know what those dead, you know what those works are? Where does it seek? Do the things you know that I'm speaking about all through the Torah. These are the works. Keep the Shabbat. Keep my Sabbaths. Do the you know, these are these are the works. But this is not our righteousness. You will never have the righteousness. And the Apostle Paul gave us that, ex that through the works of the law. He didn't say to abandon the works of the law. He just said, if you don't come in the nature of righteousness, if you don't come in the nature of, of Yeshua and my kingdom, you will never keep them. Because you can do all the feast days, you can do all the things, you can put the tzitzit on, you can, you know, dress yourself up on the externals and do all the externals. But the Father's looking at the heart. And if you come into the feast days with strife, with contention, with unforgiveness, with Amen. disobedience, with you name it, any aspect of the, that other kingdom, he say, oh, I hate your feast days. That's what he'll tell you. You can go and do what you want, but I'm looking at your heart. I'm looking at your heart. And this is what has to be right before the Father. You know, the Apostle Paul in Philippians gives his own personal testimony. And you know, in that testimony, he said, I'm a Benjaminite, a brother of Joseph. I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees. I'm, and according to the law, found blameless. What kind of righteousness did this man, did, did Paul have? Did Saul, the rabbi, have? Saul the rabbi. What kind of righteousness did he have? through finding that. You ever hear of self-righteousness? Do you think self-righteousness is, is a wonderful uh, fragrance in the nostrils of Elohim? Do you think pride is a nice fragrance? It's the nature of the other kingdom. Pride and self-righteousness are big. And it's one of the things that we have to repent of. Because these biggies are going to drive us into analyzing our relationship with everybody around us. Do you do, do you say Yahweh's name correctly? Do you have the right understanding of this doctrine? You know, we will get into a, what's called a cultic thinking. 